This is the world's first successful DIY CSA. Oh my wow. god! Wow! wow. Oh. Hi, family. Um, this is the worst thing ever that I've ever done. And I sliced a whole fucking slice of it. It said edible banana nut bread. I thought edible meant for a story that it's gluten free and I was trying to figure out is this gluten free or not. <laughs> anyway, it wasn't that it wasn't very good, but I still ate a whole slice. And it sinks in. Edible. Edible meant pot. I ate pot banana nut bread so strong. <laughs> so strong. <laughs> so also one of the bad effects that yeah. pot has on me is paranoia. <laughs> So it's scary. It hit me like a fucking sledgehammer. I don't know if I should stand up. Oh my god, oh my god. Yes. How embarrassing am I? Oh my god, yes. To eat banana pot, banana nut bread pot. Let me show you the bay. And I was stupid enough to think it was gluten free. Oh Edible. God. Banana nut spice. It's in a Ziploc bag. <laughs> Maybe I only ate a half. Look at there's the slice. Whoa. Oh, I ate a half of a slice. Thank God. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. Oh, oh I God. didn't eat a slice and a half. <gasps> it's the weirdest feeling. I feel. I mean, it feels like LST or something like that. Not that I don't know what that feels like. <laughs> Maybe. Oh my god. Oh, I love man. how I love how she is she like right off the bat she strikes you as somebody who would who would rarely say fuck. But she's like oh, I yeah. fucking I fucking ate half. I'm fucking yeah. high. <laughs> so so for listeners uh that aren't watching this on YouTube and and hey listen if you're listening uh get your life. Go on over to YouTube, hit the subscribe button, knock the bell icon, leave a comment below. We want to see you over on YouTube. Uh, get your lazy asses off the fucking podcast and uh, <laughs> uh, from Apple Podcasts and go to fucking YouTube. Uh, that that lady with a with a sailor's mouth. She, if you if if you didn't see it and you're you're refusing to go to YouTube, uh, she's I'm gonna guess she's in her late fifties, maybe early sixties, and uh, this poor woman she fucking ate banana nut bread edibles and it, so i i don't know i i don't know why i put this in for this week's feel good friday but it, I, you know why because it made me feel really good when i fucking makes watched me your, feel good, yeah. your enjoyment <laughs> so good right and it made me actually curious to know so you know now i mean here in canada at least um and in a lot of states weed is now legal weeds being used by folks uh who have never touched it for you know their entire life like this lady <laughs> um, uh, because it's accessible, um, and there's like edibles out there now, and there's you know you can get you can get pre roll joints, and there's CBD oil and THC this and THC that, gummies and uh, all sorts yeah, of all that shit, right? Shatter. So it's like, yeah, 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 right. Shatter, <laughs> Man, yeah. guys. I don't yeah. uh, poppers. Edibles, edibles are like they're to me they're like they're like the best thing in the world and the worst thing in the world because like you can, yeah. Hey, you can eat your weed and like, you know, you don't have to worry about smoking mm. it. So it's not bad for your lungs. And like, that's not a bad thing, but, but like, it, it seems so hard for me to like properly dose. Really? THC well, Brian. Edibles. Yeah. Well, yeah. the reason for that, Brian, is that, uh, and maybe this is the PSA here. Um, eating your weed is actually a completely different high molecularly, like down, down to the, the uh, the chemical breakdown of THC it's completely different than smoking it and so um, you know people people like someone of 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 this woman's age I, I wish I knew her name uh, may not know that I mean obviously she didn't even fucking know she was eating weed in the first place Betsy she but have Betsy. you have you guys yeah. have you guys ever had that experience where you've accidentally <clears throat> eaten a bunch of edibles and didn't know uh no but no. i once made i once made um muffins and uh, i was having some friends over and they they all came over to eat the muffins but like my friends arrived at like staggered times so like mm. my first friend showed up and i was like have a muffin and i had one with him and then my next friend showed up and he was like oh i'll have one but you have to have one too and i was like yeah for sure and I've never been, there's probably one other time in my life where I've been like close to being 
as high as that time when I ate all those muffins. And that was that Taylor. Yeah. I was literally party. about to say. Bri- <laughs> yeah, I was going to say me Brian, too. That was a when weird Brian moment ate for me, mushrooms guys. and then a 50 milligram edible. Yeah. That oh, whole thing. was a you were, lot. I thought it was going to be fun. Dude, Brian was at dinner. There's no. like 10 of us sitting around dinner. And Brian was being <laughs> such a way that Jeremy and I were like, I was not it was, sure if I was going to be okay. It, Brian's tripping. It was, it was what the millennia, it was what the Gen Zers call extra. You were being very extra. <laughs> I don't yeah. even remember um, doing it. I just remember literally looking in a space and being like, you've been holding your gaze here for too long. Look yeah, somewhere yeah. else. And then you just start going, Five, four, three, two, <laughs> Actually, one. Actually, five, yeah. four, three, yeah. two, one. Yeah, there was something so, flighty about you. That it night. was a lot. Yeah, yeah, it was a lot. I I had this experience once uh, when I was so actually when I was here in Toronto. I'm I'm in folks watching on YouTube. Uh, I'm not in studio. I'm in Toronto. I'm here for a wedding, and uh, rewind back to the, the early no days. Days off. Hashtag never not working. Uh, uh, back when I went to Ryerson University, which is now being changed. Ryerson is not going to be called Ryerson anymore. Apparently, it's being referred to as X until they find a name, which I'm sure St. FX is pissed about that. But Wait, hold on. Need, <laughs> is, Ryer, is, is Ryerson named after somebody who's who's has a Yeah, I, th- I think it was past? like... I think he was like raping a bunch of indigenous babies or something. Like, like it was, it was it, he was a bad man. Um, and so they're like out with Ryerson, in with something different. Right. Um, but anyway, when I went to the university that shall not be named, um, <laughs> I, I, it was the, it was around the time where I was still smoking weed a little bit here and there. Like I, I still didn't quite get the memo. That it's not good. <laughs> that makes me and, feel so uh, bad for you with your lungs. Like, good I I know. Lungs. I've seen you um, <laughs> take a couple of hits off a joint like a few times in, uh, in our friendship. And I'm like, yeah, dude, no. It, it really does floor you, doesn't <laughs> yeah. it? It, it does floor me. It, it really wrecks me. And not wrecks me in terms of highness. Wrecks me in terms of like three, four, five days, weeks later. I'm like, fuck me. Why did I do that? But anyway, I was smoking weed in my dorm room with a bunch of like homies. And then we went down to somebody else's dorm and we were all like, hey, like giddy high. And we got the munchies. And <laughs> one of the one of the girls was like, I think there's some food in the fridge. And of course, like the fridge is like dorm room empty. And I was searching through it for food. And then I opened the freezer and I was like, oh, fuck. Yeah, dude. Chocolate chip cookies. Yeah, dude. Oh, and so, oh, yeah, dude. So, oh, yum. so we all munched down these chocolate chip cookies. And then the roommate of the dorm room got home and was like, who ate all my edibles? <laughs> and we were like, oh, no. And it was... I'm a it was, I was... I was <laughs> yeah. No, oh, no, 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 listen, no. Listen, no. Guys, no, no. this is a PSA. If you ever, ever find chocolate chip cookies in a Ziploc bag in a freezer... Don't they eat are most certainly edibles. Who who keeps yeah. chocolate chip cookies in a bag in the freezer? Yeah. Nobody. Yeah, it's right. It's Unless they're edibles. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, I, that <laughs> watch it, watching that watching Lauren was that like, poor, I bake, I do that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> watching that poor woman just reminded me of uh, one of the worst nights of my life, and uh, it just it it made my Friday feel really good. So that was for all of you stoners out there because uh, i know half the fucking half the uh, half of our patrons are a bunch of fucking stoners every time they show up to our patreon hangouts they're just i mean fucking christ darren i can't even i can't even don't even get me started on that fucking guy he's 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 out to lunch every time we we see him on the hangouts um so uh so yeah that was really fun now here's something a little less fun but also kind of fun because i fucking love the guy so much you may remember folks last week we talked about Alberta shit in the bed. Alberta just pulling a full on Florida man on Canada um, <laughs> with their decision to just pretend that COVID's not COVID. And, uh, and so, of course, um, the, the health officials across Canada were asked by the media, as they would be, like, what are your guys' thoughts on what Alberta is doing right now? And our our man, our fucking boy, Daddy Daddy Doctor Daddy 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 Daddy, Daddy, Strang. Daddy, 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 Daddy Daddy Strang, he came up to the mic. He was asked, and this was his response to what Alberta is doing. 
um, every jurisdiction is going to make their decisions based on their assessment of what's appropriate. Uh, I'll come back to, you know, we've always remained cautious in Nova Scotia. But I think the science is pretty clear that, that it is premature to say that the pandemic is over and we can treat COVID exactly the same as any other respiratory virus. Mm. Daddy Strang, a.k.a. what he is saying there, in other words, he was trying to he was trying to be very diplomatic. About it, very but what diplomatic. he was really yeah. <laughs> what he was really saying there, if you if you read the subtext, I mean, you go back and watch it again, but we don't need to. If you if you really look at the subtext, he's going, Alberta, you done fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> you done fucked up. That's the that like the, the that's the, the the diplomatic speak of fucked up is. The science is pretty clear. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. When you say the science is pretty clear, that's 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 <laughs> fucking yeah. dummies. Yeah, every, you fucking, yeah. Yeah. every Yahoo's jurisdiction is going to make a decision in their oh, yeah. best interest. Is yeah. like government speak for it. They're fucked. Yeah. <laughs> However, yeah. the science is pretty clear. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Now Fuck. we so we, we talked about this last week, and of course, like we shit all over Alberta. I um, felt bad, and, man. And, and 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 like and no, you know what? Rightly so. Like. Alberta fucked up. They're fucking up. Now, by saying that, I don't mean the people of Alberta fucked up. I mean the people that the people that should be showing up for Alberta fucked up. And we talked about this at length last week. And of course, we've got such a fucking I I love our listeners so much. And I love that this is why I love our listeners. I listen to many podcasts. As the four of us do, we, we listen to many different podcasts. And I, I don't think once, I don't think I've once taken the time to sit down and write out my thoughts in an email or a letter and sent it off to my, my podcast of choice. Mostly because I, I don't know, maybe, maybe because I feel like they'll never really see it or, or my, my thoughts aren't valuable or, or something like that. Who fucking which, knows? Which it's is just so, not something I do. Which is so untrue, too, because we literally read and see every we do. email that comes every, in, everything. right? Every, every, everything that comes in, we see it. And this is why I love our, our, excuse me, our listeners so much is because when we talk about something that's really <clears throat> pertinent or interesting or important, we have so many of our listeners that write in to like give us their thoughts. And this was this, this Alberta thing was definitely one of those pieces of info that uh, that sparked a bit of a fire on the ass of some of our listeners, and we had we had a couple of people write in. Uh, I think we have two letters that we want to read on the show, uh, one from Lindsay and one from Jay. Uh, Lo, do you want to hit us with Lindsay's message first? Absolutely. So this came to us uh, in the DMs from Lindsay. Uh, who, Zoomer who wrote <laughs> she zoomed in the DMs and wrote just wanted to say I appreciate that you felt for the people of Alberta about the insane lifting of COVID testing and isolation there's a large chunk of us here who are devastated I'm a nurse and confused about what the heck our government is trying to do mm. our best bet is that between this move and fighting to roll back healthcare workers wages after a pandemic even though it's on the rise exponentially here in Calgary again they're trying to make public health fail so they can in introduce more privatization. But I'm a filthy vaccinated socialist, so what do I know? <laughs> you know what's interesting though too is that is that like I, I literally read wait, an article. You, wait, wait, hold on, was that done? No, because, <laughs> no, no, because no, no, and, I, no. and I'm gonna I'm gonna no. stop you, Brian, because she says thanks for the love, even though I feel personally attacked by Brian. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you're not. I, I genuinely love you. I care about you. Um, the, the, the funny thing is that like, I just read a, an article headline yesterday that was like Canada entering its fourth wave mm -hmm. and like, yeah, and Alberta is like at, is leading in new cases of COVID-19. So it seems kind of fucking crazy that they would lift that. Anyway, mm. we talked about it at length last week and I, we did, we did. I don't want to yeah. get angry guys. So although I do have to say, I read that, I read that article and I, and I was very pleased that the definition of this fourth wave coming in was that there was 1500 cases in Canada daily yeah. cases. Yeah. I was like, holy shit. Do you though, remember when there was like increasing 4,000 cases a day in Ontario? Though it increased 60%. Yeah. No, I know. Week, I know so. it's, I know the, yeah. the trend is going upwards and yeah. that's what we're trying yeah. to, to not go against. But I was like, oh man, I'm I, glad that that's you know, the definition I, I do want to say, I do love 
our Alberta listeners, and I'm really excited to hear from another one. So, uh, mm-hmm. so why don't okay. we uh, why don't we dive into that second letter? Yeah, we'll dive. <laughs> we'll move on from your apology tour, Brian, and guide into our next letter here. Uh, so this is from Jay. Hey, Lauren, Taylor, Brian, and Jeremy. As an Albertan, I had to respond to all your Alberta talk. When I first read that, I was like, Oh shit, this person is going to be. Pissed. He hates yeah. Brian. <laughs> but anyway, they wrote. Uh, Obviously, the new regulations are bullshit, but you would be surprised by how many people don't think it's an issue here. People were pumped to no longer wear masks. I work retail, so I'm in the thick of it and heard between customers, it's great to see your face every 10 minutes. By the way, it's not actually great. On July 1st, when the mask, re- when the mask restrictions lifted, we went from 90% of people wearing masks to maybe 5 <laughs> or 10%. Think oh. about that. 80% of people only wore masks because it was the law. That's wild. Mm. What else would they do if it wasn't the law? I got a lot of slack for still wearing my mask and demanding my space. Have you guys seen The Purge? <laughs> Out there that was living a, it in Alberta. That was an interesting documentary. <laughs> <laughs> I still get asked most days, why are you still wearing the mask? I'm double vaxxed, uh, or, so, you don't need to, uh, so you don't need to back up. It's exhausting. I just, I've just gotten super blunt about having cystic fibrosis and being high risk. Hoping to tug oh. on their heartstrings doesn't often work. Fuck. I've gone from anger from to disappointment, and now I think I might just be extremely sad. What's the final stages of grief? So as a CFer, I think maybe I'm fucked. Maybe cross your fingers for all of us uh, people stuck in a province that's actively trying to call their population. <laughs> P.S. Oh, save yourselves. Don't come here. P.P.S. <clears throat> loving the puppies. Uh, well, oh. Jay, I got to say, dude, as someone who lives with CF, I... I can't, I can't, uh, I have a hard time imagining being in your, in your position. That's, it's really, it is really fucking tough. And like, it's tough, it's tough on so many different levels, but like, especially the level of feeling like you are being viewed as someone who is less valuable than the rest of society Mm -hmm. just because you have an illness that, leaves you at a in, in a in a position that's like very um not safe you know and it's like it, you this is what this is this conversation has come up so many fucking times since this that since this uh pandemic broke out but like this idea that you know oh it's it's it, it doesn't really matter because it's only the people that are living with pre-existing conditions that are affected. And and it's mm-hmm. it's one of those things that people forget or tend to forget that like there's more of those people in your life than you may th- realize. There's more of those people in your life than you than you think. And uh and so our heart look, our, our hearts really do go out to everybody out in Alberta and and as much as I, as much as I like sit here and, and cross my fingers and hope like maybe things, maybe, maybe it's just like the, t- like, maybe it will just be okay. Maybe Alberta will end up being okay. I have, a, I have a hard time truly believing that, but I really, I'm, 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 I'm fucking hoping. I'm hoping that. Yeah, totally. Like, I mean, what more can you do in this situation? That's like, all, all you that's can all do you is do. hope. For the best. Again, I mean, I, I mean, I, I feel the same, like, although, I mean, we talked about it at length last week, so I don't want to go into it too much, but, you know, yeah. in the same way that when this, when like a bunch of, when, when New York and California were like, we're going to do, we're going to just fucking lift everything. You know, I was going, I hope that it, I hope that it yeah. shows that we can do that yeah. and it works. And I really do hope that for, you know, although it seems like it's premature and seems like most people in the science world think that it's premature. I really, yeah, I hope that it does work because then, because yeah. again, it will, it, if it does, it will open the door for other places to be able to do that. And then yeah. Alberta will be giving itself a huge pat on the back if that's the case. But, yep. you know, if not, it's it really, really is detrimental yeah. to, you know, lives. Yeah. I, I, in terms of like, so this whole, again, I said I was in Toronto. Um, the way I got out here, was so a couple a couple you know last week I flew to Montreal went to Montreal for you know 48 hours flew home that was a bizarre experience mostly because of the flying but when I was in Montreal I was like okay everyone's wearing masks it is like everyone's out you know everyone's out and about and things seem normal except for the mask thing and it it I guess more it's it was more so of a population thing where I was going uh Halifax is not as densely populated so 
it, yeah. it mm-hmm. seems different and weird here. But then coming home to Halifax and, you know, in Halifax, it's like I'm going out to the bars every other night. I mostly like patio stuff well, be, oh, m- more so because of donut. But like things <laughs> seem pretty semi normal in Halifax, uh, normal in quotation marks. But like everyone's everyone's still wearing their masks and stuff like that. But to get to Toronto, I drove. So I drove out with my my best friend, Jordan, and her and I. Um, drew, so to get here, we drove through uh, uh, Nova Scotia. We drove through New Brunswick, through Quebec, stayed in Quebec City, and then on our way to Ontario. And um, stopping over in New Brunswick was a really interesting experience because New Brunswick has, has now lifted their, their mask mandate. And so right, like, yeah. you know, when we were doing like gas stops or, or like stopping for food and shit, it was like, I, so we stopped at one point to get to let Donut out to pee and to grab some like, some like, or, you know, we left at like, like six in the morning. So it was really early and we got to New Brunswick. And we we're like, let's grab breakfast. So we like popped into a, a, a McDonald's and uh, we, we walked in and like, were you wearing right masks? Oh, yeah. Oh, fuck yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 We were wearing masks. And then like we got in and we were like, whoa, it is. It, it was like it was a McDonald's that was like in an area where there's there's not a lot between that area and the next. So like Everybody it was this very, in. very busy place. And and on top of that, it was like it was kind of like it was a ra- it was like almost lunchtime. So like I'm sure people were there on their lunch break or whatever. And so I remember walking in and Jordan was like, this is fucking busy and packed. And right behind us, this woman walked in with her son, uh, who was like maybe, maybe like a, you know, nine year old boy, neither of them wearing masks. And then we looked around, we're like, no one's wearing masks in here. And both of us were like, uh, let's get the fuck out of here. Like this feels fucking weird. Let's get out. Let's go through the drive through even though it's a mile long, like it just, it felt fucking weird. Then we got to Quebec and things were very much like Halifax. You know, it was like mask mandates still in effect. People actually, I mean, I'm sorry for folks if this is boring, but I, to me, it was really interesting. We went to, uh, we were in Quebec. We went to old, uh, old, old Quebec. It's so nice there. It's crazy. Holy shit. What a, I've never nice, been. Eh? What a, I mean, if you're looking for a little like Canadian staycation, go to old Quebec. Yeah. Holy Fuck, what a beautiful, beautiful place. Yeah. Yeah. But we were there and it was like it was fucking super busy, but everyone's like distancing and and wearing masks. And also we realized that this was the first day that Americans were allowed in the country. Mm-hmm. And so we were like, how many Americans right. do you think are like wandering about here? And uh, we end up going to this microbrewery that was really amazing. Uh I wish I remember the name right now, but uh th- this microbrewery we get there and everyone's on the patio. So we're, I had donut and we were like, can we bring the dog? And they're like, yeah. So we sit on the patio and I was like, all right, Jordan, I got to go pee. And I go in to, to take a piss and there's not a single person in the restaurant. And I was like, oh, crazy. They must be. And, it, and like, it was packed. Like it was very busy. The, the patio was full. And I was like, oh, wow, they must only be doing patio because there wasn't a single person at a table inside. And so I came out, we sat down, the waiter comes over and I was like, Hey, so have you guys, I I take it you guys haven't like opened up on the inside yet. And he was like, Oh no, we are, but no one wants to sit inside. No one's sitting, no one wants to sit indoors. And I was was like, so nice out. (laughs) Oh fuck. Well, I mean, it wasn't that nice out. Like it was, it was like, it was overcast. There was rain earlier in the day. Like they didn't want to sit inside. Yeah. Yeah. It was COVID. They were like, we don't want to fucking sit inside here. Very Um, smart. Yeah, and I and I I was kind of anticipating Quebec City to be different than that. Mm-hmm. You know, I was expecting Quebec City to be more Alberta esque, but it really <laughs> wasn't at all. Um, so see, anyway, just a, a little lot of tourists I'll, around there at that at that time too, and like right yeah, this yeah. time, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. So it, it just an interesting kind of like Canadian fucking uh, for American listeners, you probably don't give a shit, but I, I just I thought it was very very interesting. And now now here in Toronto, it's like. Um, it feels very similar, similar to that. You know, people are, people do look, I've only been here for a day, but I, I know Toronto pretty well. And in the neighborhood that I'm in, in Roncesvalle, like it's, uh, it does feel, feels like people are still being very cautious and still being very, it gives me hope. 
I it's guess it's interesting is like because my point. I, I think that like when I imagine that when the mask mandates are lifted in Halifax, that people will continue to wear masks. Do you do you guys think yeah. it'll be different here? Or do you think yeah. that I, well it depends on it depends on what the consensus is on why they're being lifted. You know what I mean? And to you right. to what you said earlier, Lauren, I think that you said that. It's like yeah, you said it when you were reading the letter. It's like people in a, the people that aren't that are that are they're not wearing masks in Alberta because they feel a lot of people obviously feel like the thing that the government, the, the things that the government, the, st- the steps that the government are taking mm-hmm. are correct. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. so yeah, they're feeling yeah. like, okay, it's correct. So I can take my mask off. If, 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 if Strang did just copycat what Alberta did right now, there'd probably be because you no, know, which would be obviously weird, but let's just, say we live yeah, in yeah, let's say yeah. we live in that universe where he like copied everything and we did exactly what alberta did we did that tomorrow you'd probably have a bunch of nova scotians that are going what and yeah. so so you'd have a you'd have a much different guess, feeling yeah. towards what the gov- the steps that the government are taking because we are as nova scotians we are i i do i do feel like we are much more cautious in general yeah. as as a society mm-hmm. and and he even said that he even said that like in his statement there, um, I would say we've been. The, I would approach. say that we've been the most cautious yeah. of the provinces. Yeah. So when we decide to do that, I would probably we'll probably be right, the last yeah. domino to fall. And I would probably yeah. go, hey, "Fuck! It's got to be safe now. It's got to be cool now." That's true. Yeah. Yeah. If, yeah, yeah. if Daddy Strang says it's okay, then I will probably feel comfortable. Yeah. Because we've been on that cautious yeah. end of the spectrum. So I mean, like if every if. I I would be not surprised at all if we were the last province to lift mask mandates. And Ooh. so at the, you know, and I wouldn't say that, that, and again, because of that, I would say that Strang is probably not going to lift them until there's pretty clear evidence, evidence from other provinces that it's okay to do that. Mm, and yeah. so like, so, so it's all about the context of though, why. Though it is with our reopening plan and like, this is, I guess, getting, um, pretty specific to our location too but like phase five is the next step which is like no more covid restrictions right yeah and so they said that like they they anticipate that we'll move to phase five when we have 75 percent of the population fully vaccinated the head of the fda also said today that he thinks that that like we are like this is the last wave of covid yeah like Oh yeah, wow! I didn't yeah. know that. Interesting. Yeah. I I can see that too, and and but I also do think I think that there could be if people don't if we don't just fucking follow the rules for another couple of weeks or another couple of months. Like I think that that fourth wave could be worse, which would then just prolong us getting to that. Phase I think it's five. I think it's actually unanimously considered that it won't be worse at all. It actually yeah. going to be much much better. Well. No, I mean, to, not worse to that than, point, not though, worse Tay, than like to, any other phase, like, oh. like I just mean worse than it is today. Oh, right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. To, to that point, and, and this was something I, I had, I was thinking about teeing up for Feel Good Friday this week to cover, which, which we aren't. Um, but I will say, I, I, I just read recently that the Lambda variant of COVID-19, um, it, it's showing right now that lambda. the Lambda variant. There's a Lambda now. There's been a yeah, lambda so, for a couple weeks. Oh yeah, where's yeah, it coming and, from? I don't or we know. Don't, uh, we don't. That's why we call it. We that. don't ask those questions right. anymore. Right. <laughs> Who's at <But>, fault here? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Which country but, should we blame? <laughs> yeah, exactly. The the, the lambda var- the lambda variant um is it's right now science is showing that it it's very possible that it's resistant to vaccines. Ah, fuck. So so I mean you know we'll see what happens there and and how contagious it becomes you know all, all those things are all very dependent but Peru. i will say but, that's uh, we're, exactly we're not out of the weeds uh, that's exactly what the fda the head of the fda said he said i think that this is the last wave of covid barring a variant that 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 does not well, that uh, is completely yes. resistant to vaccination I don't know yeah. if lambda I has handle. entered the chat <laughs> I, <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. Don't, Hi, lambda? I don't know if i can handle like another two years of developing a vaccine like <laughs> oh we gotta <laughs> develop a vaccine for this variant everybody yeah. in lockdown Anyway, uh, uh, a lot yeah. of so uh, we're so just going to end for it th- if that happens. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so uh, that that was very, very Canada, very location specific. But uh, thanks for going on that little journey with us. Uh, we will now turn the tables on to something a little bit more uh, a br- broad and global and general. You got to uh, pick and, me up here, or what? And, uh, <laughs> yeah, this is a pick me up. I, I, you could say that. <laughs> um, so, if you haven't been listening to our 
our newest addition to the to the Sick Boy Family uh, episodes. Uh, again, three episodes a week. Mondays are our classic. Talk to someone who's sick. Find the humor that exists within it. Wednesdays, our newest, uh, are these routine checkup episodes where we talk to really fucking fascinating individuals within the world of health sciences. And um, mm. we Some recently awesome re- conversations today. It's too. holy yeah, shit. It's fucking cool. It's, it's really I fucking love it. I if really you like do to love learn. It. Yeah, like yeah. It, it'll satiate yeah. that curiosity itch that you have. Mm. If you don't like to learn, you at least get to hear the three of us talk far more than we should. Um, <laughs> and so, so uh, we recently released an episode uh, all about the the placebo effect, and I, and I think it might be one of my favorite routine checkup episodes we've done to date. Very fascinating stuff. Um, if you're not familiar with placebo, it's basically the the effect where um, uh, you are you are having effects this is from a drug <laughs> that that are mm-hmm. um, that are a drug that's meant to give you a certain effect um, and yet you are not receiving that drug but your brain is tricking you into thinking that you are and you then therefore start to feel the effects of that totally actually- Totally nailed it. Sure, I think for most people who it. thought they knew what a placebo was before, but were unsure, I think you just made them more confused. <laughs> They're confused now. <laughs> They're confused now. God, I thought placebo was so much more simple than that. <laughs> it's basically a, a drug that they tell you is real and it's not. <laughs> uh, here's an here's an idea. Suck my balls. Um, so, uh, Suck all uh, my chocolate uh, salty <laughs> balls. <laughs> Uh yeah, have uh, speaking of placebo, uh, have you guys have you guys ever traveled to Segunda? <laughs> <laughs> no, where's Segunda? Segunda's nuts. Uh, so <laughs> here is a, here is a so so anyway, last uh, last week or the week before or maybe three weeks ago, we did this placebo episode. It was fucking fascinating. And in in uh, response to that, speaking earlier of our our wonderful sweet potatoes, our patrons. Uh, Shelly over on Discord sent us an article and man, this shit, this shit fucking blew my mind. I was, I was like, I wanted to use this for what the health this week, but, uh, I already had another thing teed up and, but so this could be a what the health, but it's not, this is all about a man who OD'd on placebo. Okay. Yeah. It sounds crazy. Here's the article. Uh, have you noticed that drug commercials always conclu- uh, conclude with some ominous warning like, quote, this drug may cause headache, anxiety, vomiting, diarrhea, restlessness, and erectile dysfunction? Well, there's a reason for that. To stay out of trouble, pharmaceutical companies list every possible thing that might ever go wrong with a patient. This is also something that would be interesting to talk to someone about, Lauren, if you want to flag this. Uh, get someone on the show to talk about like why why drug companies do this. But in reality, most people who take the drug will never experience those side effects. But if they do, it isn't because the drug is actually doing the thing. It's probably because of the nocebo effect. Now, the nocebo no. effect is is something else that we covered in that conversation um, uh, about placebo. Uh, the nocebo effect is the evil twin of the placebo effect. Are you going to give with us the, another riveting definition? I am. I am, but it's going to come from this article. Uh, with the placebo <laughs> effect, a treatment, even if ineffective, makes a person feel better simply because he got a doctor to prescribe him something. A person experiencing the placebo effect uh, even undergoes measurable physiological changes. The opposite extreme, a person experiencing the nocebo effect feels badly, not because the drug or placebo has nasty side effects, but because the person literally makes themselves sick. So if a doctor tells a patient that a treatment may make them feel dizzy, the patient very well may report feeling dizzy because they they heard that. And so their brain's going like, oh, well, said I was going to feel dizzy. I'm probably going to feel dizzy. And again, we talked about how like how if we didn't hear all the shit that the vaccines would potentially make us feel... I wonder how I like it made me just wonder right. how how little right. I would have felt <clears throat> after I got my vaccine. Anyway, that shit um, was real. 
<laughs> yeah, that was that so was, weird. Yeah, yeah for it, you, it was definitely wrong. <laughs> it, is, yeah. it is interesting, though, because it just goes like, so obviously there has to be like some, they, they I mean, the, if I they, made the that responsibility, up, the, uh, I would done. be so pissed. But the, the responsibility <laughs> of, there's like a responsibility of the, the, um, the doctor to inform you of the potential side effects. Right. So like they kind of have to tell you about some of those things. Yeah. Even though there's like a very slim chance that you experience them, which then can make you experience them, right. which is yeah, fucking sad that they have to tell. But you. then, how do they, they just, just be like, hey, yo, this will make you feel. Really but how good. do they distinguish between it being the drug's fault in placebo or nocebo? That's a really good question. Like, how well, could they possibly yeah. fucking know unless the drug is is a placebo? <laughs> that was a quite. That was a question you should have asked our guest on placebo effect, Taylor. <laughs> God damn um, it. <laughs> so, so uh, what? One extremely unusual case demonstrates just how powerful placebo effect really can be, or nocebo effect in this case. Several years ago, a published case study describes a 26-year-old man who was taken to the ER after arguing with his gr- ex-girlfriend. Very interesting that they really specified ex-girlfriend. After arguing with his ex-girlfriend, he attempted suicide by swallowing 29 capsules of an experimental drug that he obtained from a clinical trial that was testing a new antidepressant. When he arrived at the hospital, he was sluggish. He was shaking. He was sweating. He had rapid breathing. His blood pressure was extremely low at 80 over 40, and his pulse was 110. A little wimp, 110. I had 120 resting heart rate uh, after my vaccine, but whatever. Dude, that's, what a, that's, a, that's, a, that's, a, that's a tough brag. Fucking, <laughs> fucking man up. You know what I mean? Man it's up. Funny because you said um, he was a wimp, but actually your body's response to the vaccine is kind of wimpy. Was real. Than- was just real. Yeah. <laughs> so, real. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I got the vaccine and I, I should have went to the hospital for, for attempting suicide. I I tried to commit suicide. I got the, I got the fucking Moderna. A vaccine. <laughs> oh, um, no. So no. allegedly, so doctors hey, were you're successful. Not supposed to say attempted suicide, by the way, guys. That's right. I, I. What are you supposed I, to say? What are you supposed? To, you're supposed to say I attempted to end my life. Um, yeah. oh. uh, so doctors were successful at raising his blood pressure. Over the course of four hours, they injected him with six liters of saline solution. Whoa! His Did blood pressure in. A placebo to treat the placebo? Well, hold on. Oh, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, right. They're, they're, yeah, they're just like, take this. This will, this will this save is, your life. This is Narcan. <laughs> this is yes. Subloxone or whatever it's called. Uh, <laughs> but after all that, his pulse remained pretty high at 106. So what finally cured the dude wasn't anything that the emergency room staff did. Instead, a doctor from the clinical trial, trial arrived at the hospital. So he walks into the room. And tells the patient, listen, those antidepressant pills weren't antidepressants because you were randomized into the control arm of the trial. Oh, man. So he, uh, he OD'd on sugar pills. Guys, this is actually bullshit. This is totally... So he didn't cover- die, though. No, he didn't. No, he didn't. But, okay. but this is actually bullshit because this is totally a cover-up for the pharma company that gave this guy ah, the drugs in the trial. And they were just like, hey, on. tell him he was in the... Tell Ryan's him super the, skeptical yeah, of Big the, Pharma. The, tell so him within, the within, placebo group. Within, within 15 minutes of the doctor telling him this, uh, the patient's blood pressure stabilized at 126 over 80. His heart rate dropped to a perfectly normal 80 beats per minute, and he was totally fine and left the air. <laughs> but I mean, 110. I mean, that's just like... I'm nervous. Yeah. 110 is fucking yeah. low. Yeah, totally. Yeah. But I mean, still it's, 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 it's high. It's higher. It's high. Like that's a high heart rate. That's it's high heart that, rate for hanging it, around, I guess. Yeah. If you're sitting yeah, yeah. down, man, your brain is a very powerful thing. It's crazy. See, I was fucking, I thought, cause I, Brian sent me that article today and I opened it up and I couldn't read it at the time. So I was like, I'll just leave it open and I'll read it when I can. I was like, this guy died from a placebo i, I mean i yeah. thought the i thought the end of this was and he died oh he, oh you didn't like, make, he, he, like he i didn't finish of, the article <laughs> i didn't finish the article. he went home and before he walking up his driveway just fell fell down to the ground died no i don't believe you Jerry's full shit like can you imagine <laughs> i mean nah. i was like i was thinking wow this guy thought himself to death 
Yeah, <laughs> that would be impressive, right? It'd be super. I mean, he, it would he, really he, speak to the power of. Placebo. He thought himself. He thought himself to. He thought himself to a. Uh, thought himself okay to the state. ER. Yeah, he thought yeah. himself to the ER in a similar way that some people who eat uh, edibles by accident will think themselves to the ER. Mm. Mm-hmm. Oh my God. Oh. Remember the Brian, cops? Brian, just for, just for a second, call? Brian, can you, can you play that video again uh, just for a moment? Hi, family. What's the first? Um, this is the worst <laughs> thing ever that I've ever done. <laughs> and I sliced a whole fucking slice. That was it. That was, that was all I wanted to hear was, was, was that I first line. I sliced a whole this is, fucking slice. <laughs> this, hi, family. Hi, family. This was the worst thing I've ever done. Oh my God, that fucking There's a, I, I what's, what's really funny is she said, hi, family. I'm trying to like... Well, who who did she send that video to? Like, right. did yeah, she really did she funny. mass email that to just everyone in her family? Oh, I hope she fired that into the family group chat. Which she would <laughs> oh, only God. do if she was high. Because why would you <laughs> yeah. do that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why would you do that? Yeah. Uh, speaking a, of, wait, there's a, I wanted to say before there's um there was yeah. this uh, woman who lived next to my mom's place uh, a number of years ago who oh, had yeah. I can't remember what the name of the Fuck. it's a syndrome or disorder where you're you basically convince yourself yeah that you're you're you can't see and you go blind and yes you can totally see you like Like she can't she couldn't she couldn't see she was blind but like there was nothing there's nothing wrong wrong. with her body physically like uh what the fuck is it called i remember when that happened is it like to the point it's on the tip of my tongue is it is it the kind of thing where let's say you like threw something at her face? Would she have the reflex from no. her sight to no? No, nothing. Crazy. Like totally blind. Yeah, totally okay. blind. I remember um, when you told me that. I was blown away by it. Fuck. I it, like it's, it's a legit. Con- it's mind. a legit condition yeah. Yeah. where you actually are so psychologically convinced that you that you are away. And I don't think it is. Speci- it's it's not. I don't know if it's specifically- conversion syndrome. Yes. Yes. I don't think I don't know yeah. if it's it's not specifically to do with blindness. It could be anything, right? It can. I believe it can be with anything. For her, it was blindness, and I think it, I think blindness is common, from my understanding. But I don't know enough about it. It would be really interesting to talk to somebody about it. Would she yeah. Would she come on the show? Do you think, Brian? I don't know. I think that she's like continued to have some pretty um, serious uh, physical and mental health struggles. So I'm not right, sure right. if she would be a good candidate. But but uh, yeah, I'm right. sure there's somebody out there. Do you want to dox her? Right now, we could, yeah. So her <laughs> address is. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, speaking of um, uh, saline solution, which was in our last story, there they, they were pumping and pulling saline. This is a fucking crazy story. That's a fucking uh, they, amazing what a segue. Segue. Yeah. <laughs> segue. Speaking of salt water, um, this is a crazy story coming out of Germany. A nurse in Germany suspected of replacing COVID vaccines with saline solution. Oh, my. Mm, Wow. Authorities in northern Germany have appealed to thousands of people to get another shot of COVID. Thousands of people. Uh, After a police investigation found that a Red Cross nurse may have injected them with saline solution. The nurse is suspected of injecting salt solution into people's arms instead of genuine doses uh, at a vaccine center in Friesland. Uh, yes. a rural district near the North Sea coast in early spring. Quote, I am totally shocked by this episode. Sven Ambrosi, a local counselor, said on Facebook as local authorities issued the call on Tuesday to about 8,600 residents who may have been affected. What's your motivation? Like, Especially why? since you work for the Red Cross. Right. Yeah. Like, don't work for the Red like, Cross. Like, there's such then. a... There's such a there's so many character traits that you imagine are inherent within somebody who chooses to work for the Red Cross. <laughs> yeah. And swapping <laughs> vaccines out is not one of them. You would like one. to think. You would like to think so. Although there has been a like a have you guys ever seen the um uh the books that are like 500 and it's like 500 500 like murders 500 oh yeah, yeah. Uh, 500 cities you should visit. yeah like, like shit it. like that and and, and uh and wait 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 500 cities you should visit and then what 500 murders you should it is actually yeah. 500 it's like, vaccine doses you should yeah. swap. it's like it's like <laughs> yeah. a it's like a it's like a coffee table kind of book that and they they okay. have it's like 500 and like whatever 
se- several different topics you can buy them for. Anyway, yeah. there's one that there's one for murders that was always sitting around at Collins house when he used to live um, <laughs> okay. over by the bridge. And, um, and I was, I would read through it all the time when I was over at his place. And I was always really surprised by the amount of, uh, nurses that like took care of children in like the, t- like the tens and twenties, 1910s and twenties that were like, Oh yeah. Like, you know, Betsy Voss murdered, you know, 25 <laughs> children at the such and such children's hospital. And, you know, and she just slowly poisoned them to death. And you're like, what? That is the this name is the of the former secretary of education of the <laughs> yeah. United States. And I think that's fucking no. Betsy, <laughs> Bob, Betsy, oh, DeVos. Betsy DeVos. Yeah. Uh, that'd be really that is, as soon as you said that, that's what I thought of too. I think I Betsy like, yeah. DeVos has slowly been killing <laughs> children <laughs> in schools across America. <laughs> you heard it here. What you, heard, a beautiful you heard it here Freudian. first folks. Yeah. Yeah. You heard it anyway, here. First. Sorry. Sorry to derail. Yeah. The, uh, <laughs> so they, they go on to say, while saline solution is harmless, most people who got vaccinated in Germany in March and April, when the suspected switch to, place are elderly and high risk uh people high risk of catching covid Fuck. so she really fucked a lot of people police investigator peter Bre- uh, beer peter beer cheers buddy <laughs> cheers. cheers cheers october fest <laughs> <clears throat> yeah. Uh, police police investigator peter beer speaking earlier at a news conference covered by german media said that based on witness statements there was quote a reasonable suspicion of danger the motive of the nurse who was not named i think taylor just named her um, was not clear, <laughs> but she had aired skeptical views about vaccines in social media posts, police investigators said. So she, she was potentially an anti-vaxxer who fucking happened to get hired by the Red Cross. Uh, you know um, what? I Like that, it, it kind of makes sense in a weird way. In the way that you talked about, like who would work for the Red Cross and want to help people and do that to them? Well, Sinister. if you believe if you yeah. believed that the vaccine was bad for people and you were that fucking crazy. Yeah. I, I, I guess yeah, well, that's but the it, thing. Uh like I don't know, and like a lot of true crime stuff, like there's a they they talk about missionary killers and they're people that believe that they're erroneously mm-hmm. that they're helping. Right. And so yeah. like those Great types of attraction of or prof- professions attract that kind of person that wants to be benevolent, but it's just like they're sick in the head and it's yeah. the wrong thing. So yeah, some people are just, uh, some people are just fucked up, man. You know? <laughs> She's fucked up. Some got, people got, are just fucked up. I got man. no sympathy for her <laughs> and whatever, whatever fate awaits, which is Guys. probably just some jail time, I guess, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, a little bit of German jail time. Yeah. Guys, I'm uh, I'm staying at uh, Dave Culligan's house in uh, in Halifax. Dave Culligan, uh, highly Doc, famous. Docs, he, Docs. he he re- uh, yeah in in Toronto. He lives on Roncesvalles. Uh, it's uh, <laughs> Jesus, don't actually do it. <laughs> um, uh, but uh, speaking of fucked up, I think I think Dave. I think your place is haunted, dude. Donut is <laughs> tripping. Donut is yeah, tripping. He's, I thought you going to be like, I think your ghosts. place is flooding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah donut, Donut's here like seeing ghosts or something. He's tripping out. You okay, buddy? Everything's good, buddy. Dogs, dogs can sense it. Uh, Rupert's here. Jerry really misses Donut. No, Just saying. Yeah, yeah, he told oh. us earlier. Yeah. I thought you were going to say Mrs. Me. Um, so it was not immediately clear whether the suspect has been arrested or charged in the case. I'm sure she will be. Which, according to broadcaster NDR, um, uh, it has been handed to a special unit that investigates politically motivated crimes. Oh, that's interesting. So, uh, yeah, yeah, she's. I think she's in for it. I, um, I wonder, like, what do you think that carries? Like, do you think that could be like an assault? Would it be an assault charge? Would it be like... Could it be possibly, if they really want to make an example of her, could it be attempted murder? You know what I mean? Yeah. No, some, no. If you don't get the I, vaccine, I, I, no, you get I don't the COVID, think that, you die. I, I, maybe manslaughter. No. Manslaughter. If someone, I mean, if someone died of COVID, maybe. But it's just um, saline, though, right? So it's like, I no, mean, I guess if they no. caught COVID and then died, I think it, it's, exactly. Yeah, it's probably. Right. It's probably more so in the like in the realm of like malpractice or something like that. You know, mm, that's true. She probably has yeah. good insurance that covers stuff like that. <laughs> Uh, hey, Brad, Guys, you maybe, bring she's, the- maybe she's maybe she's maybe she's onto something. I mean, yeah. maybe she's yeah, maybe. you know maybe she was you know te- maybe she's uh, maybe That's what you know. Why are we for. so quick to judge this woman? <laughs> this you know? uh, uh, this podcast is brought to you by Standard Life. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Brad, you want to bring me uh, front and center here? Yeah, because it's time to go into this week's edition of <gasps> What the Hell. <laughs> Yeah, that was a good uh, solid nine and a half out of ten. Great use of the camera being close. (laughs) So, uh, so we kind of talked about this last week, 
but we're going to go a little deeper. Uh, last week we talked about self. <laughs> we, yeah, last week we talked about self surgery <laughs> and uh, trepanation. Uh, this week we are talking about something that we covered last week, but we kind of just glossed over. This is the world's first successful DIY C section. And oh, yeah. uh, this was actually sent to us by one of our patrons because last Feel Good Friday we live streamed it during the live stream in our chat. This link was sent to us by I think it was it was it Roseman that sent us. It this? was uh, it was Roshin. Uh, Roshin, same name, s- different pronunciation. <laughs> different, different. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> different names. Yeah. <laughs> Roshin, Roseman. All right. Uh, so this is uh, the world's first successful DIY C-section. It was March fifth, uh, two thousand. Inez Ramirez Perez. There's a lot of a lot of S in that name. Inez. Ramirez Perez was seven months pregnant with her ninth child. This lady loves giving birth. Um, <laughs> it is fucking crazy. Dude, that's a lot of kids, dude. Guys, nine, nine kids. That's guys, fucking wild. Like 60 years ago, that was just like the fucking name of the game. Isn't yeah. that crazy? It Could is you crazy. imagine? It is crazy. God. I can't even God. imagine having Thank a God. child on purpose right now. <laughs> that's just <laughs> let alone like seven. Or like that's nine. literally just Amen. nine years straight of being pregnant. Um, yeah, probably yeah. So, longer. Yeah. yeah so Inez, Inez Ramirez Perez, uh, she was seven months pregnant with her ninth child when the pain began in her abdomen. It was intense, crippling. Um, her mind immediately let back to the stillbirth she suffered two years earlier, oh. and the panic set in. The baby had died as a result of an obstructed labor, and with the newest hospital more than, uh, the, sorry, the nearest hospital more than 80k from her home in rural rural uh, Oaxaca in Mexico, the 40 year old wasn't prepared to risk it happening again. So she, what? like, was she a doctor? Uh, no, no, dude. No, no, she's no, just no. been she's fucking, just, uh, dude. She's a fucking pro, a dude. doctor, dude. She's, what she's doctor? A... What doctor has the time to be a doctor <laughs> and pump out nine babies? That yeah. like, she's a mom. That's her job. She's like, I mean, look, I shouldn't have said that. She, I'm sure, maybe she had a job. I don't know. And I didn't read this article fully, so nine we're all reading is, it together. Nine kids here. is tough to imagine. She does anything <laughs> the, else except yeah. Be a I think mom. I think she's just a mom. I think she's just momming it up. That's well, that's her job. It, I, and she's probably why, really really good at that job. The so. reason why I ask is because it's just very remarkable that she dude cut her stomach open. She's got like at, she's got like four people's experience with giving birth. I was talking to my uh, sister in law today and or yesterday, and and uh, she said uh, she was like, "Hey, do you know what happens when you get a C section?" And I was like, not fully. I guess they just cut you open and pull out the babies. And she was and like, you were like, you were like, like, nor do I want to fuck. She it. was like, I watched a YouTube video on it the other day and it was super <sighs> fucked up. They take all of your organs out. Like they take, uh, they yeah, take yeah. organs out and put them. And she was like, I told your, I asked your mom if she knew. And my mom who gave birth to twins via C-section was like, oh yeah, I know. That's what happens. Oh my yeah. god! They take your organs out. Oh, I didn't. That's know That's fucking that. crazy. Well, so I'm imagining baby, this person like yeah. taking their fucking organs. Well, why do they out? take your organs out? Now I want to know. I don't know because man. the baby yeah. moves your or- the baby like literally moves your organs inside you. Yeah. But I thought your yeah. uterus would be the thing that's like at the front and center. No, because so the, to- uter- the uterus like pushes <laughs> up against all your other ones, like moves shit around. <laughs> crazy. Taylor, yeah, Taylor's yeah. just like, well, I just thought the uterus is just in front, and just pushes everything into the back. I mean, <laughs> that's a fucking. Why the fuck wouldn't that happen? Guys, I well, mean, you're not wrong. It does, but yeah. it also, but also the baby, it's like in, it's like you're in you too. It doesn't just go out. I thought it was. Uh, I thought I knew that they cut your fucking abdomen muscles, which is a big. Which is, is yeah. has a huge recovery time. Like it's, I'm pretty sure if you have a C-section, it's like, like you can't even fucking lift a, you can't lift a fucking water bottle for six weeks. It's like do nothing. Yeah, yeah. yeah but the, yeah. like we should. Just, I just we love. Should probably just I, have somebody on the podcast to talk about this. Like, no, we know Sunday, everything that there know. is to know about this. We don't need to know any more. <laughs> you know what happens? We're experts, guys. We have I just a couple. Love, we have a couple I, conversations about women's health for like a few weeks, and then we're like, oh, we're good, and then we just forget <laughs> yeah, yeah, it all. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, no, and then we I read don't. about a uh, then we read about a woman who cut her own baby out, and we're like, ah, you know what? We got to get somebody else in here. Um, I, I just, I just, I just love, I just love how Taylor's like. I mean, I don't know what I fucking think because I don't know anything, but I just love how Taylor's thought is like 
Ah, it's just like a kangaroo pouch. You just fucking <laughs> slit that, Whoa, slit hey. that bitch open and you pull the fucking that kangaroo out. That wasn't my <laughs> Warren. As the only person with a uterus in here, did you feel that I felt that way? No, but I thought it was funny. <laughs> it is funny. It is funny. So, okay, get this quote. This quote is fucking intense. Actually, before I do this quote, Bri, bring up the picture of the knife. This is the knife that uh, Inez used. Holy oh, fuck me. Jesus. Right? So, so look, this woman hey, is, Zeus. she's in, she's in Oaxaca, <laughs> Mexico. The nearest hospital is 80 kilometers away, which makes me, leads me to believe that she is in a very rural area. This knife looks rural as That's fuck. A like rural this knife looking right. knife. That's that a is a knife. Is, that is, is a folks, go to YouTube. You got to look at that knife. It is a knife that looks like it is used for bushwhacking. Yeah, right? it, so looks she like, takes, it looks like a knife that your like grandfather has on his mantle. And is like, <laughs> yeah, I use yeah, this. yeah, yeah. I, I was given this by my great grandfather in yeah. the, in the, in the civil war. <laughs> in the war. Yeah. 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 So, yeah, so, so here's her quote. This is fucking crazy. She says, quote, I put the knife in here, then pulled it up. She said, pointing oh. to her lower abdomen. Whoa. She said, she, and then hold on. Then she said, quote, yeah, dude, this, this makes me real. Like, I can't make a fist right now because I'm so weak. She said, she said, once wasn't enough. I did it again. I was crying and screaming in terrible pain. Yeah. Duh. Then she says, then I cut open my womb and pulled the baby out by its feet. He cried straight away. So Whoa. here's the here's the photo of not only the knife, but the knife. And her belly, and oh. her. Oh my god! So this oh, that's, is no. Oh. That's I mean. Well, there, there we go. Yeah. Uh, so this is Inez right here. There's her belly where she jammed the knife in the bottom, pulled up to the and side, and then you can see. Yeah, and then you can see the knife right there. Okay, that knife now doesn't look like a rural knife from this angle. It looks like a uh, a very long kitchen knife. Yeah, like, but it looks dull. <laughs> yeah, it, it doesn't does even really look that yeah. sharp. I don't see a sharp edge on anywhere she, on that knife. She, she definitely. I feel like I. I feel like after this happened, she was just walking around town every day, going, "You call that a knife?" <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she was just. This like, is this loves, is a knife. <laughs> she loves Crocodile Dundee. Is you her know, favorite movie. You know what's funny though is that like like, I mean, let's just looking at this scar. Like she did a pretty good job. Yeah, dude. Like, yeah, well, pretty, she did. It's a pretty right. clean dude, cut. She delivered a baby. Right. <laughs> yeah. She did. She did the best job that she could have done. Uh, this incredible birth is believed to be the first known example of a mother successfully performing her own C-section, in which both she and the baby survived. The wow. case stunned the world when it was published in International Journal of Gynecology and Ob uh, Obstre uh, Obstetrics. 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 <laughs> In 2004. Obstetrics. Obstetrics. Uh, obstetrics. God, um, we, we should have somebody Lauren's just talk a, about that. Lauren's just a know-it-all over here. <laughs> yeah, fucking nerd. <laughs> fucking Louise. <laughs> fucking Louise over here. Shut the fuck up. Obstetrics. Sorry, I got it. Let, let me just get that cool. sentence again nice and clean. Brian, clean this up in post. Uh, the case stunned the world when it was published in the International Journal of Gynecology and Obstetrics. <laughs> uh, <laughs> You're actually closer to obstetrics. You know, uh, I, said, I said obstetrics one. in a fucking Australian accent. Obstetrics. <laughs> um, article authors described... <laughs> obst obstesis? Uh, <laughs> article authors described how Inez fainted after the self-inflicted procedure, but was tended to by a local nurse. Quote, the nurse provided some health care, but no per, uh, parental care, or sorry, prenatal care. God damn it. Learn how to, you guys, learn you guys how to read, Jer. Can you guys believe that we have a platform? My God. I know. <laughs> and and that platform is CBC. God damn it. <laughs> Sorry, Dude. CBC. Thanks, CBC. Fuck. <laughs> Thank you, CBC. Yeah. Every every like I, I think about Matthew Galloway listening to this podcast and going, Why what am I doing with my life? <laughs> 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 Uh, all right, guys, we can do this. Uh, got yeah, this? we got this. Uh, we got so this. The, nur this. the nurse provides some health care, but with no um, potential care in, uh, to the inhabitants <laughs> of the small village to, uh, to a village deprived of running. Holy shit, dude. Whoa. OK, I actually have to say this sentence for real. The okay. nurse provided some health care, but no prenatal care 
to the inhabitants of the small that small village deprived of running water, electricity, and sanitation. Wow. She found the patient disemboweled and proceeded to reposition bowel loops, suturing the skin with an ordinary sewing needle and cotton thread. Oh my the patient God. was then transferred to the nearest hospital eight hours away by car. There at uh, Huixtepec Hospital, surgeons <laughs> operated on Innes, properly closing her wounds. Wow. Dr. Or, uh, Dr. Onoro Galvin who worked at the hospital, told AP back in 2004 that it was a, quote, miracle that she hadn't damaged any vital organs. There was no sepsis, no internal bleeding. Dude, she, uh, honestly, she got fucking, like, she got lucky. Oh, guys, either yeah. that either that, or she's John Wick. Guys, how, how, how much harder do you think she believes in God now? <laughs> Probably super hard. Super hard, right? Super, way, super, way super hard. Major God points scored on that one. Yeah. Way um, hard. I mean, yeah, you do that. I think you're right, Jared. I think you do that. You do that a hundred times and you're probably getting negative outcomes. Yeah. 95. Yeah. She, got, she, yeah, she got very lucky. She got very lucky. And so here's a photo of her and the baby. Um, and he is a happy looking oh. motherfucker. Look at him. Oh, He's so yeah. cute. They look so yeah. happy, but that's crazy. Like, because we ha we all have an instinct against hurting ourselves, so it yeah. just shows mm. the crazy like mama bear mm. instinct, like yeah. overriding the self preservation I, one. I, I know really exactly. Ever since I got a puppy, I know exactly what you mean. Mm. Yeah, I just can one hundred percent. I know you're joking, <laughs> but it is pretty strong. You call yeah, your true. dog your son <laughs> to a degree. <laughs> <laughs> that is almost like it. it You're it, offended. Not it's a, annoying. Not offended. It's annoying. No, no, no. It was like it started out like cute, and now it's almost unsettling. <laughs> yeah, I call like I call you, Loki like my you son. Believe he's human, but I say it in a funny way. I go, I, "Hello, my son." I, I say I, it like that. I love him so much. It's crazy. He is lovable. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. really. Would sweet. you kill for him? Would you kill somebody for him? Yeah. Yeah. See. Yeah, would you was, would you um would you senselessly kill for him? Like if he was if he was like when you were sleep like if you're asleep right because you, you let him sleep in your bed, which I don't. I'm a good dog owner. I let my dog sleep in his fucking crate because that's where you should let your dog yeah, sleep. Yeah, in. Anyway, whiny little dog, don't you? you let your dog sleep in your bed. <laughs> Let's say your dog one night, you know, it's like three a.m. It's the witching hour, and you wake up, and Rupert is licking and nibbling your ear as one will when sleeping in its owner's bed. And as it's like nibbling your ear and you're kind of like, <laughs> stop it. <laughs> no, stop it. I'm trying to sleep. Let me sleep, buddy. Come on. And then he's like, <laughs> he's lapping your ear and he's like, <laughs> and he's like doing that sort of like grooming chew where it's like mm. uh, mm -hmm. just the front teeth. Yeah. And then, and then he, and then he goes, murder for me. <laughs> yeah. Would yes. you be, would you be like, would you be like, all right. Yeah. Who? Well, did you, did yeah. you see the man outside the building? He what? looked at me weird. Kill well, him. So that would be so. my first question: is who's the who's the target? <laughs> yeah, who's the, who's, who's, who's the target? Who's who? the target? Tell me who. Just <laughs> tell me who. And he, yeah, he, and he's like <laughs> the guy, the guy, the guy in the power, the the power chair that that doesn't give me the treats, but I know he's got the treats. In his <laughs> the guy in the power chair who doesn't It's the premiere of Alberta. <laughs> oh my if God. It was, yeah. If it was any Albertan, then it would be a no brainer. Right? Oh my God. Oh, wow. Hey, wow. oh my wow. God. Wow. Hey. wow. Oh, Brian right just committed him. to murder. Hey, yeah. Alberta. The reason I said that is there's a guy in the power chair that I love you so there's much. A guy, there, there's a guy in the power chair that in my, in our neighborhood, cause we all live in the same neighborhood, a guy in the power chair in the neighborhood that uh, every time I pass by with Donna, he's like can i give him a treat and and treats don't sit well with donuts belly like he just it's just like oh i'm gonna throw up or i'm gonna shit and i'm always like oh no I, and i've told him a hundred times every time i'm like no it's, it's not good for his belly and he's like the guy looks at me like you fucking monster <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like hey man like yeah. it's fucking not good for my boy yeah. just fuck off dude my son yeah. my give son. him give him give them my to son. donut or give him the rupert he'll fucking eat them and if you don't give him the rupert he's his master will kill you. Um, <laughs> well, guys, back. I gotta say, I it, this is it's my favorite time of the week. Uh, love hanging out with the three of you. Love talking about this whack shit that is in the world, and it really does make my Fridays feel a lot better. Great way to kick off the weekend, folks. Hope you feel the same way that I do. We love that you're tuning in from wherever you're tuning in from. 
would really appreciate it. Again, if you just head it over to YouTube, even if you don't watch on YouTube, uh, typically your podcast on YouTube, um, uh, just head on over there and, and give us a little, uh, give us a little subscription, yeah. uh, button press. Just help um, us grow because, because the more people, the more of you that list that are listening to this, go over and subscribe, the more that our videos are going to start popping up in people's news feeds and the more people that's right. who don't know the magic of this show yeah. will get it. And, that's really, and, and, really and, and, it. and I should say, if you don't hear it, uh, if you don't hear the desperation, we really, we, we really fucking need you to do this, please. Oh, fuck, love please. Like it, oh it, like, so it is, it is, it is. Brian will we kill need us this. This we yeah. need this. Just fucking do it. Just go to YouTube. We are failing so What's hard up, on guys? YouTube. Rupert said, "If we don't get hundred thousand likes on our next video, <laughs> I'm gonna have to murder everybody." Yeah, that, that video uh, might play well. <laughs> uh, but for real though, but for real though, uh, we are on YouTube. We're having a lot of fun over there. Go check it out. Uh, Sick Boy on YouTube. If you're tuning in on Apple Podcasts, leave a rating or review. We say it every week. It really does mean a lot. Uh, on Spotify, all you have to do is just hit that follow button. And uh, if you've already done either or all of those things, uh, tell one of your friends to do the same. Uh, and if you have a letter, uh, if you have a letter, if you're from Alberta and you think <laughs> and you think and you just have a completely, completely different opinion from us on what's going on in Alberta, let us know because I'd love to hear the justification. <laughs> um, and you can do that by going to letters at sickboypodcast.com or if not going to there, sending an email to letters at sickboypodcast.com or you can slippity slide into the DMs on our Instagram. Um, and if you want to uh, be a guest on the show, one of our amazing guests, you can go to sickboypodcast.com slash contact, and fill up the guest form. Hell yeah. Uh, thanks so much to the people who make this show happen. Lauren Sankey, you're the best. Uh, Tiller, you're okay. Jared, you're okay. all right too. Um, okay. Fine, a huge shout out to our manager, Jeff Lonis. Uh, we couldn't do this out without you. I mean, we, we probably could, just not as well. Yeah. And yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> a huge thank you to Rich O'Coin for the theme music on this show and everybody else who makes the show happen the other days of the week. Like all the listeners. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, um, primarily our patrons. Primarily patrons, but everybody. Yeah, kind of. Right. That is it for this week. I'm Brian. I'm Taylor. I'm Lauren. And I'm Jeremy. And this is Sick Boy. Oh. Also a hot boy right now. Sweat. Sweat. Sweat.